Hi, I'm Angela Wolf, and most of you know that I love garments, but you have to accessorize. So I want to give you a few ideas. Check out this cute bag. It's printed and it's quilted, and it's really easy to do. I'm a little bit of a computer geek, so this was really, really fun. Let's take a look at this software. You just open it up and you open a file of a picture, any picture. Let's just do this one here, kind of colorful flower. See? Here's the photo, and then look over here to the right. This will change every time I move the flower. So I can take my mouse and I can move this over and look at the kaleidoscope. That is really cool. Now this is a flower. You could use any photo. You should have seen what my fishing photo turned out. That was really fun. But look at how much this changes. Now, one thing before I go on, right here is a background color. When you're doing a quilt design, you probably would want your background to be somewhat of a close color to what you're working on. So I'm just going to use this pen, go back over to my photo. Oh, let's go with this green down here. See how it changed? Or I could do it again and a little bit different green. If you want a real specific color, then you would click on this box here. And let's just say we want to go a little bit lighter. So you have every option for color. One more really cool thing is this background, background texture. There's all these options, starburst, psychedelic. I mean, there's just tons of them, but let's just go with marble. That's one that everybody would know. And you can even change the size of the marble. Are you getting the idea? There are about a million options with each one of these. So this here is a template, kind of looks like a piece of pie or piece of pizza, whichever you prefer. Go up here and click on this and see all of these blue designs, they're kind of a tealy color. These all came with the software, but of course I'm never satisfied with that. So I uploaded some new designs. Hmm. Let's try this one. Very neat kaleidoscope, but look at what happened to my pie. I'm gonna move my photo a little bit more and as I'm moving that, pay attention to the right of what, what is happening here. And I can turn the photo. You could take one photo and one kaleidoscope design, and you could pretty much spend an entire year coming up with different ideas. I can even make the photo larger. I think you're getting the idea. So let's just leave it kind of at that. Now I'm going to go up here and hit Actually, I'll go right here so you can see it. I'm going to hit print. A couple things to keep in mind when you're printing. Right here is where you figure out your width. I have this one figured for 7.5, which will fit your largest hoop. Right here for the margin, you want a 1 8 of an inch margin. And that's point zero one two five, just like that, OK? And you could either center your kaleidoscope on the page, or if you're using a smaller design, you would want to unclick that. So maybe you could get a couple designs on the same print. But I'm going to leave it centered. And one last thing here, properties. You'll want to check with whatever printer you have, because you're going to need to choose the paper that you're going to be printing on, which is fabric, and refer to your manual, because all the printers are different. And we're going to print that design. So here I have fabric. This is inkjet fabric, so you can print it with an inkjet printer. Get the idea? And the backing is just like this, just a little, it just kind of peels away. I want to embroider the design that I'm printing. So I'm printing it, and then I'm going to embroider on top of it. So I'm going to pull this off, and this is why. First off, it's really important to use an inkjet printer. That's very important on this. But I've pulled this off because what happens if I'm going to put a different stabilizer on the back of this, a fusible stabilizer, because that, this film right here isn't quite enough as it goes through the printer, it can become skewed. And for, not that it has to be perfect, but if for the best results of embroidering the same design that you're printing, this can't be moving around. So here is a little bit, see, a little bit firmer than this, fusible stabilizer. So I will take this on top of, remember which side you had, I'm just flipping this around, and press that in place, which I've already done for you. 
Here we have. So I will run this through my printer, and this is what you have, which is very fun. Okay, first of all, we're going to do one more thing because we're making it, well, what I would call an applique, because this needs to stick onto your fabric, onto your bag, onto what we're going to embroider. So I'm going to add another, it's uh, just another stabilizer, fusible, onto the back of this. Okay, and the one last thing you have to do before we get to the embroidery machine is trim out this design. Try to be as accurate as possible. The closer you are at being accurate through all these first steps, the better chance of everything lining up later. Don't worry, if it doesn't line up the first time, it's just a different design, but I'm just trying to give you the best odds for the best success. So cut this out, which I've already done. So now we have this, it's ready to go. What I have here is my hoop, again with a fusible stabilizer. I've already pressed this into place. This is my fabric backing. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick this into the embroidery machine. I've already downloaded my design into the machine. So I'm putting this in and all I want to do is get a line. It'll print this line that I can follow. Put my presser foot down. You'll see this. I'm actually using a contrasting thread here so you can see this line. And while that's printing, this is going to go right into that and I'm going to line this up as best as possible. This guideline is really important. I have to tell you, the first time I embroidered, I had no idea what it was. I just thought it was cool. It's to line up your embroidery. So see this pink line? It's pretty much gives you the best possibilities for success here. Okay. So I've already attached an extra layer of fusible here, and this is going to be attached right here. You can see this pink line, and you're going to, this is not going to work. You, I can't have an opening like that. Try to be as accurate as possible without making yourself crazy. Line that up, which I have already done. And because we have the backing on there, we just press that into place. And you can actually see the stitch lines back there. I've already downloaded the embroidery design with my USB, so it's already loaded. It tells me that there will be six different colors throughout this design. And it also tells me it's going to be 28 minutes. That's pretty easy. So all I have to do is put my foot down and hit the green button for go. Let's see. One thing I forgot to do was cut off my little thread tail. Make sure you do that. But other than that, this looks really good. So let's let that go. And while that's embroidering, after 28 minutes, this is what I would end up with. Isn't that beautiful? So the next thing that I would want to do is put an edge stitch. So one of the quilting stitches. You could do a blanket stitch, anything like that to secure this. For example, like on these. And then the other thing is some of these have a batting inside of them. So if you decide to have it quilted, make sure you pick a stabilized batting. So these are some of the other designs. I'm just saying you can come up with a lot out of this. So let's take a final look at our tote. This turned out great with a little quilting around the edge. And I have a feeling you're going to see one of these designs on one of my new summer dresses. 